So I, I discovered the, the Fuji X with the, when the X100 was announced. Uh, at that time, I didn't think it was ready for me or I was ready for, uh, for it, but I was starting to use smaller cameras, mirrorless cameras, um, and I started to, un uh, to see that um, after a while I took my big Canon DSLRs only with me uh, to justify to the clients that I was a professional photographer, but I, it's not that they're bad cameras, absolutely not, but I started to really enjoy working with the smaller cameras. Um, so it took me a while to um, get along really well with the X-Pro1, because that was my first uh, Fuji camera. Uh, we disagreed at times, uh, we fought at times, but we came to the point that we started working really well together, uh, the camera and I, um, and, and I started to enjoy it so much that um, it's basically my main camera system. Uh, I do 99% of my work uh, with my range of Fuji cameras uh, because I believe they support my way, my vision of, of shooting, um, so it's a good fit. Um, however, there are occasions where um, you need um, longer lenses or higher resolution or whatever and then I wouldn't hesitate to rent whatever I need but um, it was a bit of a, a jump into the dark and in the, in the unknown to sell my DSLR kit last year because I'm a working professional photographer so I need to be able to deliver uh, but in the end I it's now been more than a year that I'm working without any DSLRs uh, and I haven't yet had the need to rent anything else so it, to me it's a pretty complete package with all the new lenses and the cameras. So. so I found out that I was basically developing a, a gap between my uh, professional work and my, my personal work. Like, um, I found out that I shot my clients completely differently than my friends, my children, my family. Um, and I actually felt uh, more for the pictures that I took in my personal life. Uh, although technically maybe the professional ones were better, but they were cleaner, more perfect, perfectly lit, um, well set up. Uh, but I kind of missed the, the re realistic feel of it and, and I started thinking and, and analyzing my own work and also the work of other photographers to see what it is what is it that draws me to that picture that I like and, and then I need this, this sense of uh, truth in my pictures, the, this, that realistic thing. And it's very often that you find that the small detail, one or two small details that are wrong, that uh, gives an image a lot of uh, authenticity. Um, in, in the, I come from a, a television and, and video background, um, and, and one of the few things I remember from film school was uh, when they taught us about the Zapruder technique, and Mr. Zapruder was the guy that um, filmed uh, the death of President Kennedy. And um, it's a very shocky video, and it's, it's completely technically bad. But that's what it gives it so much drama and, and realistic. And, and so I kind of try to put the same principle in my photography. And today I, I don't worry about small imperfections. I will welcome them to make my pictures more real. And sometimes I even go as far as to introduce some imperfections, shoot straight into the sun so you can get a bit of lens flare. And that gives this, uh, the, the images a, a lot more truth in it and, and I, I don't like the fake world of, of uh, over the top perfection so that's kind of the way that I went and uh, that goes hand in hand with, with the personal work and, and the professional work going uh, together, sorry my camera almost dropped, um, <coughs> but the, the important thing is that um, also clients and it's not just private clients, it's also advertising and, and commercial work some of them also like this truth more than uh, the fake stuff. So um, I figured that, yes, maybe I'm going to have to find some new clients who don't require that, that perfection, but at the same time, they are, they must be out there. So 
I can feel a lot better and, and I feel a lot stronger about this is what I do and some other people might like more glamorous and that's fine, it's completely fine, but this is what I do, this is me. And now my professional work is also going more in the direction of this is me and I can really stand behind it for 100%. So the way these cameras work with me to, to achieve the, the goals is in, in different ways. It's, first of all, technically these cameras have an amazing sensor. Um, also, the, they are designed for photographers, so they feel logical in my hands. Uh, they're simple to use, but you also have to work really well and, and concentrated to get the most out of them. If you, it's not a camera for sloppy photographers. If you just want to put it on automatic, this is not a camera. Uh, but if you are consciously photographing, this is a great camera. So it's the technical package to me is very good. But what also helps is that it's small and light. So it allows me to take my camera much more, to travel, to move a lot faster. I'm a big guy. If I have a big backpack with 15 kilos of, of uh, photo gear on my back, there's no way I can move through people or narrow streets. I just knock over everybody. Um, so to me, it, it is easier to move going unnoticed or at least not have the same um, barrier between me and my subject. So I can be more natural with people. If I hold this up to my eye, this is not too big. I still am in contact with you. Well, if you have the big camera, people do like this. And now I can be closer, can be more intimate in my photography. Um, and so to me, it is that complete package of technology, which is important. But even more important is the fact that um, people don't see me as a threat when I'm using one of these smaller cameras and I can go really close to people uh, and let them be who they are. And at the same time, it forces me to interact because with a big camera, I can hide behind it take a long lens and go way back. But with this, I'm forced to get to know the people and, and become more personal. And I think that translates in the pictures uh, that they also become more personal. Uh, to me, it is very uh, essential if you want to make a good portrait that you have your own definition of what is a portrait. Many people think that a portrait is a picture of somebody like this, but to me that has nothing to do with my definition for a portrait. And mind you, you might have a completely different vision and that's fine, but the thing is you need to come up with a definition yourself of what a portrait is. And for me, a portrait is uh, a picture that tells a story about somebody. And you basically have to choose which story to tell about somebody. So you see something and you don't really go for like the, the, the superficial external things, but you start, is this person somebody who is like happy or is this uh, a serious person or is this somebody who is uh, maybe a bit um, scared or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to, in, in a couple of minutes after meeting somebody to kind of get an idea of what kind of person you have and let every technical decision uh, be the result of the story that you want to be telling. So you have to know what you're going to be telling. And then lots of photographers ask me when I teach workshops, yeah, but why do you choose this lens? Or why do you choose that shutter speed? But it's all dictated by circumstances a bit, but mainly about the story that I want to tell. And so if you want to uh, make a picture of somebody like very happy, um, you go and, and look for shallow depth of field, you go and, and look for, uh, and make them smile by telling a joke or, or acting silly, which is something I'm very good at. Um, and, and you look for a, a white or a bright background or an overall feel and that kind of make the whole picture fit together so every technical choice will fit together. So to me that's the key thing to good portraiture is to have an idea what story that you want to tell and then tell it. And you can go, the first step you need to go through is to go for the obvious. You, we can, generally when we meet somebody, we have in a couple of seconds, we have an idea of how, what kind of people, person this is. 
but uh, people are more complex than just one thing. You cannot say this is a happy person. We're all happy and sad at, at some time or mad or whatever. And I sometimes prefer the challenge of trying to get a lesser known uh, part of somebody's personality uh, out of him. And that's hard and it doesn't always work. Some people don't want to show that. But to me it's a matter of respect for the person in front of me is to try to dig a little deeper. I, I often tell this like uh, even the most shy person once in his life is going to be dancing naked on the bar. And that's the kind of moment I want to get out of somebody. Not that I photograph every serious person naked dancing on a bar, but uh, it's just that unknown thing to get out of it or get a different layer in, in that portrait to me is the key to, to good portraiture in general. It's too dangerous to, to say, like, buy an X, because, uh, you know, it's like, it has to be sincere. Um, if you're interested in improving your photography, go deeper and um, create that extra layer in your work. Challenge yourself, then I think the X series of, of uh, the Fujifilm uh, cameras are amazing. They will challenge you, they won't make it easy on you, but if you stick to it, you will be rewarded by things that, um, you didn't think you could do.